She's currently a freshman in high school. She's been a WordPress blogger for four years and writes about adventures, life lessons, her journey through school and being a teenager, and her friends and family. She's recently started a YouTube channel sharing videos about her life and travels. While she's not busy with homework and exploring with her family, she loves to dance, and choreograph, read, write, and play with her brother. So without further ado, Natalie Boyd. I started using the notes app on my phone. 
when we were traveling or I was at school or there was a fun event, I would take out my phone, take some cool notes really fast, fun things we did, how I felt, facts even, and then later I could come back to those notes when I was trying to write my blog post and it would practically write itself because I already had all of this information. I already had everything that I needed to write. I struggled with comparison depression, but I got over that because I realized that I am unique and so is my perspective. The part, part of what led to that was I figured out that my mom, who I compared myself to, her angle is different. Her audience is different. And who she's trying to reach her audience is different. And I had to figure that out by myself. I'm not going to try to reach out to business people or moms who are trying to plan a trip. I'm not going to do that. That's not what my blog is about. So I figured out that what I'm trying to do is unique to me. I was critical of my writing, but I learned that I needed to be patient with myself, and I needed to practice. I figured out that I needed to start blogging a lot, to kind of figure out how to actually do it. So I kept going, and then over the years, as I've started, I've only gotten better. I've only gotten better. And from where I am today, from back then, it's a huge difference, and it's much, much better. And I struggled with perfection. But a published post is better than an unpublished post. <laughs> <laughs> much, much, much better. <laughs> so I would write a post, maybe it wouldn't be perfect. That's okay. At least I still got it out. Plus, I can always go back and edit them. It didn't have to be perfect. A lot of my posts now aren't the super long ones that I dreamed of having. They're just some text with a couple pictures, and that's perfect for me. And that works for me. If you never have a tough time, don't force it. You have to write when you do have time. All that forcing, it never works and it never sounds good. So I had to find time in my schedule around dance and family and school and homework that worked for me. Luckily, as a freshman, I'm forced to take a health class. And it is very, very boring. <laughs> <laughs> we have like a lot of extra time in my class toward the end, which she uses as homework time. <laughs> to do my work, so I don't, I don't actually have homework. So I pull up a Chromebook because we have to have one. I log in my website and I'll write a blog post. Usually I can get at least one done, if not more than that. Then all I have to do is go home, edit some pictures, and it's done. So that's one way that I found time in my schedule to actually be able to write my blog posts. If you don't know the tools, ask for help. And you can learn one new thing at a time. Starting out, my mom wrote me Photoshop instructions on his post-it note, and I referred to that every single time when I had to do my photos, and so now I've practically memorized how to do it. Even now, I still have all the tools, but as I'm learning, I'm asking for help and figuring it out. And I needed, after all those bro bumps, I needed to find my blogging group. And I needed to, to be easy, because if it was hard, I would not do it. <laughs> so finding my group took a lot, but it was worth it. I had to figure out the length and types of posts that work for me. Were it going to be long posts, short posts, how many pictures in a gallery, was it going to be a quote, was it going to be a video? Luckily, I found a variety that works for me. And I'll write my posts and format them based on the thing I'm doing. If it's a quick school event, I'll maybe do a couple pictures with a little bit of text. If it's a long vacation that we did, it'll be a lot more text, with maybe a couple galleries. So it depends on what I'm doing and how much, I, how much time I have. And that helped me. And also, batch processing images was one of the best things that I started doing. I would take a whole bunch of pictures from a whole bunch of different things, put them in Photoshop, and I'd edit them all at one time. That way, all I do is write. And for me, that's the easiest part. Because doing all the images gets really boring, and it's just the same thing after another. Which, and no one wants to do that. So luckily all I did was write. And then I could schedule that out and they would post and it would be perfect. And kind of what I said earlier, I had to find the best time to write my posts. Luckily, I watch a lot of Netflix with my brother while he plays video games, so that's when I do a lot of it too. I also schedule my posts out over time. After I have all those pictures and all those posts written, I would schedule them out to post over the next couple of weeks. And that helped a lot. It made it easy and stress-free. Because then, I didn't have to worry about logging in and forgetting to post something, hit publish every once in a while. So that allowed me to be stress-free. Over the years, and blogging, I have learned a lot of different tips. There's been a lot of things that have helped me 
figure out how to look. Such as your content formatting matters. No one wants to come to your website and read blocks and blocks and blocks of black and white boring text. That's a textbook's report. And no one likes reading a textbook. So what I do is I use quotes, I use facts, block quotes, and then I use bullet lists, bold, subheadlines, and those are different colors. And so those help me break up my text and makes it more appealing and eye-catching to readers. I also add a lot of the quotes and facts. That makes your posts a lot more interesting. And it's not just what you did, this is how I felt about it, what you did was awesome. It's, oh, here's a cool fact or a quote that can leave people thinking. I also group my images in galleries. If you think about it, if you're scrolling down the website and see a picture, 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 <coughs> in one long column, I don't think, I don't like that. It doesn't look very nice. But if I put my pictures in a mosaic like a gallery, and it's really nice and it looks good on my site. And that's what I like. I've also learned to write great headlines. This is something that I've just learned recently, actually. And because imagine if you're going through Twitter or Google or another social network and you're looking for fun things on vacation. You see two headlines. San Francisco. Or fun things to do in San Francisco for free. Which one sounds like a better one for you? Writing great headlines and detailed headlines helps people come to your site and they get more interested. And that's a big thing that I learned. I've also learned that the more you write, the easier it becomes. As I've kept writing blog posts and publishing and posting, it's only gotten easier. Every time that I write, I learn at least one thing new, which is big, because practice makes not necessarily perfect, but it makes it better. <coughs> I'm also a very, very forgetful person, and there are numerous times where I'll post, a, I'll post something, and my friends will be like, um, what's up, with, what's up with this post? And I realize, oh, I forgot to add a featured image, or oh, I forgot to replace some of my placeholder content. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really bad. <laughs> really bad. And so my checklists help me actually remember how to do those things. And they also help me remember some of the tools that I don't use every day. And those help me a lot and improve my blocking experience. You also have to remember to not be afraid to be yourself. You have to make your blog post your own, or it's not your blog. I learned to embody myself in my blog post, so my blog and the design is colorful and it's upbeat and it's happy, and that's kind of what I like. That's kind of what I am. And I make my posts my own. Add your adjectives, not like what I, not like what I did when I was 10, that's bad. <laughs> but you want to add all of that fun stuff that you want, because that makes it a lot more fun. I've also learned to take the right photos for the space you have on your website. There have been times when I come back from vacation and I'm looking for my featured image, which is a good horizontal image, and all of my photos will be vertical. <laughs> and I can't crop it down, that's, you're going to have to adjust eyes and people. And so what I like to remember when I'm on vacation or I'm out doing something, I, need, I know that I need to get a good horizontal image for my featured image. I need some vertical ones to mix up my galleries, and all of my photos can't be selfies. <laughs> as attractive as you think your face might be, people don't just want to see close pictures of your face on their own website. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, so I've learned to take I've learned to take the right photos. You also want to stick to the social platforms that your audience uses. None of my friends or readers are gonna be using LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I use either of those. I use I promote my stuff on Instagram and Twitter and I use YouTube. Because that's what my friends use, and that's what the people that I care about seeing my posts also use. And that's what I do a lot when I can on my website. And that allows me to get my site out there to the people that I care about. One quote that I love to remember is this one by William Cullet, is to sit down to write what you've thought about, and not to think about what you shall write. I love that quote. Mainly because I'll go on a fun, I'll do a fun thing, I'll be at school, and something cool will happen. Like, oh my gosh, did you write about that? And I'll sit down and write about it. But if I sit down and say, all right, time to look, and I'm thinking, like, oh, I did that thing like three months ago. I don't really, I don't really remember it. It's a lot harder to write about it. So I've learned to write when I have something, or my notes will help me a lot when I come back to writing. In 2017, on a road trip to Death Valley National Park over Thanksgiving break. I started vlogging. This was a huge step for me, 
and I started using YouTube, a new platform I can conquer. This has been very stressful for me, and I'm not going to lie, I get very, very self-conscious when we're out on a trail, and there's a whole bunch of people, and I'm like, oh, I can do a video. This is not going to work. Because <laughs> your videos, no, you have to be over-animated, and you have to be enthusiastic and upbeat, and that's hard when there's a whole bunch of strangers. It's hard, because you don't want people to think like, Oh my god, what is she doing? <laughs> what, what, what's happening? Look, it's weird, right? I get really uncomfortable. And I'm still learning how to walk. So, you know what, let's do right now. We're going to do right now, and I'll show you. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll show you. Make sure you, I'm going to, I'm going to say wait. Make sure you do it, otherwise it's going to look weird. <laughs> Comments. 
I use it for my tile mosaic galleries and the carousel viewer, plus a whole bunch of different things I can't actually remember because it does so much for my site. It has lots of different modules my dad uses, like the ProTech modules for security, and the modern module to send him an email if my site ever goes down, which is really, really helpful, and it helps my blog be even better. I also use the WP Instagram widget, which is one of my favorites. It's on the sidebar of my site, and it shows your most recent nine photos. And it also says a follow me on Instagram link, which I really like, because that promotes my main social feed, where I'm going to be promoting my website, which is awesome. I also use Simple Page Word on my site in the WordPress dashboard, because you can drag and drop the pages to the order that you want them in. And me and my parents like to keep them in the order that they show up in navigation. It makes it easy, and it's awesome to use. I also obviously use Google. I use, <laughs> obviously, I have to use that. I find facts from Google. If I forget some things, I can look it up. It's great. Plus, it's also a major search engine that I have conquered to optimize <laughs> so I can make them available and more people can find them and see them. As I have obviously over the years have learned a lot of different things, I'm still learning. I'm still figuring things out. I do not know everything yet. But I am learning. I have Yoast SEO installed, but I haven't really been using it. For these last four years, I've just been writing blog posts published, writing blog posts published. I haven't really done any of the behind the scenes work to actually make them appear when people search things up. I haven't really done any of that. I haven't figured it out yet. But I'm learning how to figure it out. My parents help me. I'm learning. I also want to learn more how to optimize my blog posts and YouTube videos. Up until recently, I didn't know a headline and a title were two different things for blog posts. Probably a lot of people don't. But that's okay because I'm learning and figuring it out. I'm learning to write better descriptions, better titles, better headlines, which helps a lot with blog. I'm learning and I'm getting I love to remember the quote 99.9% .9 of bloggers are not awesome on day one. Their awesomeness is the accumulation of value they create over time. I feel like this post, this quote, kind of encompasses my blogging journey. It kind of says, I was not awesome on day one. I was not awesome. But these past four years, I've either been learning and I've been gaining experience. I'm accumulating all this knowledge and skill and awesomeness. So I am getting there. And I know as I keep blogging and I continue to do it, I will only get better, and so will you. Thank you again. I am Natalie Warren. And I'm
maybe like hundreds or thousands of people on, on, online looking at it maybe? Do you have any, did you ever look at the stats or the numbers? Uh, we have stats. I don't know what they mean. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing that I'm learning. That's another thing that I'm working on. Um, but I know, I know that my friends do look at my posts a lot. And um, they tell their friends about it. And their friends tell And it just keeps spreading. Other so I think that a lot of my friends do. And they subscribe too, which is awesome. So they, I know that they read it. But I don't know. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any long term plans or do you ever think about what you know, do you want to do this for a living maybe or what what are your thoughts on that in the future? I really, really enjoy blogging and I love, love, love doing it. And I think that I could do it. I, I definitely want to continue my blog for as long as I go. Because I love it. I don't know yet if I'll make something out of it. I might, but I like having that option available. Have you uh, inspired any of your friends to start a blog or a YouTube channel? My friend Marisol actually started a blog recently because she saw me and she's like, wow, that's so cool, I really like that. Well, I like photography. Do you think I can do one on photography? I'm like, yeah, if you wanted to, sure. And so she kind of started one recently. Um, I don't know what she uses for it, but I know that she has started it. Yeah, how do you post? I usually post either definitely like every week probably or sometimes when I have a lot um, I'll do twice a week on like opposite ends of the week. Kind of like or I'll do like a Tuesday and like a Friday and then next week I'll do like a Wednesday and like a Sunday. Um, so I'll break it up like that but pretty often. Yeah. Natalie, I was looking at your blog and it's terrific. I mean, it looks like you travel you so a lot with your family and you're getting out into the world. Do you find that there's now a relationship between you and your blog and wanting to see more places? Has, in other words, the act of blogging furthered your interest in traveling with your family and yes. seeing more places? Yeah, it, it really, really has. I love, I love my blog. I love having all my stuff on it, and that just makes me want to go on more places. And want, I love, would love to keep exploring, and I want to go so many more places. I can put it on my blog, and it makes it a lot more fun. And it's definitely inspired me to do that. It's definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, question: You mentioned your checklist. What kinds of things do you put on your checklist? Oh yeah. My checklists, I put, some things are like um, reminders of how to use Photoshop. Um, some of them will be like, don't forget to do your featured image, or don't forget to do the description, or um, don't forget to like, set the right date for scheduling, um, or be, make sure you go back and reread it so there's no mistakes. It'll be simple stuff like that that sometimes I'll overlook and forget to do. Um, so the checklists help me remember those kinds. Thank you so much. <laughs>